Hi, internet friends. My name is John and I hope you're feeling well today. In fact, I hope you're feeling cheery because yes, in this video, we're going to be talking about Umbraco queries. You see what I did there? Cheery, query. Took me a while to think about that. So moving on, this is episode 10 in my Umbraco series. Hit subscribe and all that sort of stuff. What we're going to do in this video is talk about the different ways of accessing data out of the CMS in code. Now, I think this is one of Umbraco's weakest points. I really like Umbraco. However, I think this topic is really confusing. Now, depending if you're in a view, a controller, a vanilla controller, if you're writing some custom code, the way that you access data from the CMS can actually change. So what we're going to do is take a deep dive and I'm going to explain everything that you need to know so it'll be crystal clear of how you should access data. I'm going to start with some very basic Umbraco 101. Now, the point of this section is to make you think about where your data is coming from. So we're using CMS. We all know that the information is stored in a SQL database. Duh. On the screen right in front of us, you can see that I have my sample site database opened. So we've got a number of tables. At the top here, you can see that I've done a query against Umbraco property data. And within, we can see all of our CMS content. We all know that querying data from a database isn't the fastest thing in the world. So to ensure that Umbraco CMS is lightning fast, it comes with a front-end cache. Now this cache is called examine and it's based on a Lucene index. So whenever you go into the CMS, publish a page, an index is created and added into this front-end cache. You can see where the files for the indexes are stored on the screen here. So it's app data, temp indexes external. On your website, if you're looking at that folder, you'll see something similar. And this is how we can actually query content in the CMS really quickly. Unabraco fundamentally provides two different approaches for us to query content out of the CMS. Approach one via the SQL database and approach two via the front end cache. So let's go over the code to do that. In front of us on the screen, you can see this cheery query controller. And we can see we're passing in this I content service. And this is how we query content from the database. So underneath here, I've got an example of how we'd get a page. So we just pass in a page ID into get by ID. This is going to return us an item of type I content. So this is something to be really aware of when you're working with anything with I content, you're talking to the database. So beware about performance. Now, in general, I don't recommend that you use this service. If you're creating a backend plugin and you want to create a page in code, or you're trying to do some read write operations, then think about using it. However, for normal, you know, just displaying data on a web page, avoid it because it's got performance issues. Another interesting thing is if I try and type in URL, you can see that there's no URL property, and that is because it hasn't been published yet. So you can only get the URL of an item using the cache. Talking of cache, let's talk about an additional way of querying for content. And this is using the I published content query. Now this is one way, and I do mean only one way, of querying the front end cache. So again, we've got a query, we're passing in an ID. This time, in this instance, we're using the media cache. There's also a content cache. And this is gonna return us an item of I published content, and this is good. This is what you want to use for like 99% of all queries. And if we type .url at the end, you can see that we've got access to a URL. So this is a published item that we can use. To compare the performance between these two APIs, let us do a little experiment. Now on the screen right in front of me, you can see I've got this method called time database query. And what this is going to do is it's going to call the content service. It's going to call a page and it's going to do it 500 times. Now we've also got a second method. This second method is called time cache query. It's going to use the published content query. It's going to call it exactly the same page and it's also going to call it 500 times. What do you think is going to happen? When it comes to measuring performance, there are only two characters that you can rely on. The Roadrunner and Wiley E. Coyote. Looking on the screen, let's compare how our APIs performed. So getting 500 items from the cache took exactly zero milliseconds that's pretty quick and then getting the same item 500 times from the sql database took 117 milliseconds so you can see clear difference now imagine you're on a massive website which is you know accessed 10,000 times every day this is going to just completely nail your performance so avoid using it we have proved that we always want to use the front-end cache when we're querying for data out of umbraco however 
this is where things start to get a little bit more messy and it all depends on where you are in your code as to how you can access the cache. This is the bit that I'm not really a big fan of. Ideally, I think they should have just provided one interface. However, it is what it is. Now I'm in a view and if I do Umbraco, this will access the Umbraco helper and this is the way that you can access the front end cache. So if I just do umbraco.media, I pass in a page ID like I did in the previous example. This is going to give me access to that page. Now notice here I'm using this inherits, um, inheriting from Umbraco view page. As I said in the view model episode, if you haven't seen that yet, go and watch it. It's a classic. When we're working with Umbraco, really we should be working with view models. And when we're working with view models, you'll be passing in this model. And this will mean that actually by by default, you don't have access to the Embraco property, so you can't access the Embraco helper. So if you're actually walk, looking at a lot of these tutorials online, you'll see people say, oh yeah, just use Embraco and just you know do this. However, it's a big sort of sacrifice because it means that you can't use view models properly anymore. Now you can access the Embraco helper in your front end views when you're using a model. However, you access it like this. So you do Embraco web composing current Embraco helper and then you access the media file. So even in your views, there's two different ways of how to access the front end cache, depending if you're passing in a model or you're inheriting from the Embraco model. Throughout this series, I've always recommended that you try and avoid using custom code within your views. So this means that we should avoid using the Embraco helper in our views unless we really have to. This sort of leads on to a second question. What's the best way to access the front end cache within our controllers and our custom code? Now, if you're going through the core documentation, you may notice that the cache actually is exposed via a interface called I publish content cache, as you can see on the screen right in front of us here. Through the cache, we've got access to things like get by ID. So if we pass in a page ID, what do you think is going to happen? Now, if you try and use this API directly, you're going to get a simple injector issue. Now, Umbraco does not expect you to query the cache directly using this interface. Maybe someday in the future you can. However, at the moment, you need to access the cache through an intermediate tree, and this is usually the Umbraco context. So just because you see this API doesn't mean you can use it. In fact, if you try to use it, it's not going to work. So how else can we access the cache? Whenever you're creating a controller, as long as you're using one of the classic Umbraco types, you know, like the render MVC controller, or the surface controller, then you'll have access to the Umbraco context via an exposed property. I'll give you a quick example. So if we go down here, we can do Umbraco context. Then we can do content, which is the front end cache. And then we can do get by ID, passing in a page ID, and then that will give us access. Now, even though this code is exactly the same as the one where we use the interface, this will actually work, which is a good thing. Now this, approach isn't ideal. One, we're not using dependency injection to access context, which is going to make it a bit harder to unit test later on. The other one is that what happens if we're in a vanilla MVC controller? Obviously, this won't be possible. Let's quickly validate what I'm saying just to prove that I'm not a fibber. Now, as you can see, I'm in a normal controller. So we're inheriting from normal MVC controller. In our action, what happens when you think I type in Umbraco context? nothing it doesn't know anything about it whatsoever so how are we going to access the front end cache in all these different scenarios there are in fact three valid ways of accessing the content cache within a non-standard umbraco controller or some custom code three is crazy i know however that's just the way it is let's go over all three and you can pick the one which makes you happy or the happiest so we'll start off with our good old friend the umbraco helper now, the reason why I don't like passing in the Umbraco helper is because it's not built to an interface. I like to follow my solid methodology. So I like things which are written to interfaces so I can do the open quote, close principle and all that sort of Zen thing. So I tend to avoid passing in the Umbraco helper. We've also got the Umbraco context query. This is the API that we used at the beginning. Nothing wrong with this. This is going to do everything you need. There's also a third way of accessing the cache and that is by passing in this Umbraco context factory. Now, this is actually a pretty cool API that I really like. If you see my video on components and composers, you'll know that you can add in custom functionalities when Umbraco is booting up. 
Now, sometimes it's possible to write code which is used before the Umbraco context is actually initialized. And this factory prevents any issues from occurring. So what this factory does is make sure that the Umbraco context is valid. If it is, it will then give you access to everything. So this is the approach I tend to take when I'm writing my code. So let's have a look at some of the examples. I'm passing it and I'm trying to query 2141 for all three examples. So using the Embraco helper, you can see I've got a valid object. Using the published content query, again, you can see that I've got a valid object. Now, the interesting one is the Embraco context factory. So in this example, we use the context factory. We ensure that we have an Embraco context. This is going to give us a reference to the context itself. And through here, we can then access the content cache, and then we can use our normal get by ID. Get by ID. So as you can see, there's three different ways. They all work exactly the same. They'll do what you want. I prefer the Umbraco context factory. And the reason why is because it gives me a standardized approach that I can use in my class libraries. I can use in my controllers. I can use in Umbraco controllers. So I tend to favor this one just because it means I can write the code the same way. And I know that if I'm picking up any code that I've written, I, I don't need to think about it. I can just write it in a standardized way. Which way you decide is up to you. doesn't really make a difference. Pick the one which makes you happy. However, I would suggest you follow one which uses an interface rather than a concrete type. Before I wrap up, I want to impart one last golden nugget of wisdom into your heads. And that's around the type of cache that you're using. Umbraco comes with three front-end caches, one for content, one for media, one for members. Now, depending on what you want to query, make sure that you use the correct cache. On the screen in front of us, you can see I've got a query to the content cache and a query to the media cache. I'm passing in exactly the same page ID, 2181. Now, the item I'm searching for is an image. And as you can see, by simply querying the content cache, it's empty. And by querying the media cache, I've got a valid image. And this is something to consider. Always make sure that you query the right type, otherwise you're gonna get these null weird errors. I'm interested to know what you think. What is your preference of how you query Umbraco for content? Please leave any comments below. I promise I'll get back to you. Pinky swear. Now, as you can see, querying for data in Umbraco is probably a lot more complicated than you might think. The main takeaway, as soon as you get access to the Umbraco context, things are pretty easy. I know that when I started learning Umbraco and seeing all the online tutorials, it really baffled me why some codes worked in like one situation and others didn't. And I'm hoping this deep dive sort of explains where and when you should use the different APIs. If you enjoy this content, then I actually do weekly web development episodes all about Umbraco and basically how to be a better, more productive developer. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this content and to be an absolute legend trying to grow the channel. And this is the easiest way that someone will think of you as a legend today. Do it. Do it. If you want to learn more about Umbraco in a condensed format, then I have actually written a book on Umbraco V8. It's called Umbraco Secrets Exposed. It's available through LeanPub. It's still a work in progress. Draft one's finished. There's about 100 pages. However, there's a load of good stuff in there which will teach you everything you need to know how to get up and running with Umbraco. So if you just want to support me, go over there, check it out. I'd appreciate it. If you want to do me a massive solid as well, hit that like button. Hitting like basically just tricks the YouTube algorithm into sharing this video to more people. Otherwise, enjoy your life. Happy coding. See you next time.